guys welcome back to tech dose and in this video we will look at finding pairs with a certain sum problem which is from lead code number 1865 a good problem to solve is two sum problem after having solved this let's now look at the problem statement here you are given two integer arrays nums1 and nums2 you are tasked to implement a data structure that supports the queries of two types add a positive integer to an element of a given index in the array nums2 or count the number of pairs i comma j such that nums1 at i plus nums2 at j equals a given value where i is an index in nums1 j is an index in nums2 implement find some pairs class where find some pairs is an object uh, of the class and it gives two arrays nums1 and nums2 that needs to be initialized and uh, void add is another function where you get index and value where the value gets added to the nums2 at given index okay and uh, integer count is giving you a total value uh, using which we need to return the number of pairs i comma j such that nums1 at i plus nums2 at j equals equals total now having read the problem let's look at the first example in this case our given first array is 1 1 2 2 2 3 this is our array number 1 let's say and these are marked with indices 0 1 2 3 4 5 uh, let's take the second array and the second array is 1 comma 4 comma 5 2 5 4 and let's mark it as the second array 0 1 2 3 4 5 now in this case uh, the first query that is asking is counting the number of pairs between array 1 like if I take array 1 at i plus array 2 at j then the sum should be equals to the given target t so if I take this to be a and this to be b then a plus b should be equals to t or if you say that if I assume this to be the a value then I am searching for the b value in the second array in such a way that b will be equals to t minus a right so I'll be iterating for all the values in array 1 and let's assume that the array 1 value here is 1 the target is 7 so I will be searching for 6 in the second array do I have a 6 no so the count contribution will be 0 by this one if I go for this one then the count contribution is again going to be 0 for this 2 I am searching for 5 there are 2 5 so the count contribution will be 2 for this 2 as well it will be 2 count for this 2 as well it will be 2 count for the 3 I will be searching for 4 on the other side and there are 2 4s so the contribution is 2 and there are no other items so the total count is 8 and that is why the answer is 8 here now the add API will be adding to index 3 value 2 in the array 2 so at index 3 if you add a value 2 here then this 2 becomes equals to 4 now once it becomes equal again you are given the count query to count uh, the number of pairs to have some 8 now let's iterate again in the array 1 if you do that then array 1 first item is 1 so we are searching for 8 minus 1 7 on the other side there is no 7 so for the same reason the count is going to be 0 for the second item as well for the third item we will be searching for 6 there is no 6 no 6 no 6 on the other side and for 3 uh, we will be searching for 8 minus 3 5 on the other side there are 2 5 so the count is going to be 2 total and that is why the answer is 2 so I guess you have understood uh, what we have to do here now the constraints in this problem are very important so you must understand that the nums1 dot length is 1000 and nums2 dot length is 10 to the power of 5 okay so this is 10 to the power of 3 and if you write an mn algorithm where m is the size of first array n is the size of the second array then that is going to be 10 to the power of 8 which might give you tle because it will take around one second of time to solve it now each of the items are actually within the integer range and uh, you should also remember that if you add nums1 items multiple times you may exceed the integer range while that will not happen for nums2 okay you should be careful there and uh, at most 1000 calls are made to add and count each independently that means 10 to the power 3 calls to the add api maximum and also to the count api once you have understood all this constraint let's look at an example in this case array 1 and array 2 are given and you already know the brute force approach so a better way to solve the problem would be to uh, you know have all the items inside the hash map so let's assume i'm assuming that let's build a hash map out of only the second array and if you do that then i will be taking a kv pair where the value will actually be the frequency of how many times an item has occurred and k will be the value so k 
is 1 and how many times once a 1 has occurred if you pass through it it has occurred one time 4 if you pass through it 4 will be occurring one time then you go to 5 5 occurring one time then you go to 2 is occurring one time again you see a 5 so 5 will be occurring two time again you go to 4 and 4 will be occurring two time so this will be the update updated hash map once you build it so let's let's keep it now once you have built the hash map then after this you have to go through each of the item in array 1 and let's assume it to be a value or the i value so here you are looking at 3 now once you look at 3 you know that the two sum a plus b has to be equals to target and if you have already assumed the value of a in the other array you want to count how many b's are present in such a way that b equals to t minus a so what is the target here let's assume that we are doing count on 7 so the target is equals to 7 the a value is 3 so the b value equals to t minus a which is 4 so i'm counting the frequency of 4 which is two times so i can take a counter equals to 0 and add 2 to it okay and we are done we will be moving on to the next item 1 and uh, if the a value is 1 now then the target will be switching to 7 minus 1 that is 6 there is no 6 so it will not contribute anything same goes for 2 if the a value is 2 then the target will be switching to 7 minus 2 that is 5 and how many 5s are there 2 5 so 2 will be added and the count becomes 4 similarly for this 2 another 2 will be added count will become 6 for this one the target will be uh, 7 minus 1 that is 6 and 6 is not present so the final count is going to be 6 right where if you add two items the sum would have been equals to 7 so the count is equals to 6 now if you look at the next api which is add then at index 3 we need to add the value 2 so if you go to index 3 i will not be directly updating it but if i update the value then the frequency of 2 will be decreasing so go to this 2 and decrease its frequency okay it becomes 0 and then uh, you will be adding the value 2 to it and this becomes 4 and then you go to 4 and increment its frequency to 3 increment it by 1 right and now if the count is coming on 8 then we have to again parse it and solve it if the if the count is coming on 8 then if the a value is 3 here then you will be searching for 8 minus 3 that is 5 how many 5s are present 2 5s are present so add 2 to it again you go to 1 how many 7s are present 8 minus 1 7 no no 7 is present how many 6 are present 8 minus 2 there is no 6 there is no 6 and there is no 7 so the final count is 2 where if you add one item from array 1 one item from array 2 then it should be equals to 8 so we have solved both the apis in this case the add api is order of 1 because lookup in the hash map is order of 1 and if you think about the count uh, then you have to be careful that uh, you should take the larger array inside the hash map larger array inside the hash map in this case the first size is let's say m the second size is n then the array one size is maximum 10 to the power of 3 and array two size is 10 to the power of 5 so each of the count api call each of the count api call uh, will be taking order of m time because for each count like let's say for counting seven we have to iterate through the an entire array and for, and uh, uh, we have to assume the a value each time you want to calculate b isn't it so we were we were assuming the a value one after another and then trying to find out t minus a's frequency by looking at the hash map in o1 time so each of the count will be working in order of m time and you know how many counts will be there 10 to the power 3 count calls so on runtime you will get 10 to the power 3 times 10 to the power 3 which is 10 to the power 6 as that as the actual time to run all the count apis and for the add api you have 10 to the power 3 calls and each of them is taking order of 1 so multiply it by 1 and this will take 10 to the power 3 so if you add the runtime it will become 10 to the power 6 plus 10 to the power 3 which you can assume it to be 10 to the power 6 well within your range of 10 to the power 8 so this will pass within one second right so you should make sure that you do not add the first array in the map if you add the first array in the map then you will be iterating for all the items in the array 2 and that is already of the size 10 to the power 5 and if you have 10 to the power 3 count calls that will make it 10 to the power 8 and this will give you TLE okay so add always the larger array into the hash map so according to our analysis the add API will take order of 1 per call and count API will take order of M per call 
and you know there are 10 to the power 3 calls for both uh, the add and the count okay and the m size that means the first array size is 10 to the power 3 and this is the linear search on the first array the space complexity can be written as order of m plus n because uh, in the constructor when we are given the two arrays we will be creating copies of both array 1 and array 2 I hope this is clear let's now look at the code if you are someone who is looking to prepare for top product based company within a limited time of just three months then we have brought for you both the DSA and the system design live interview training program the most important feature of this program is you get a filtered and condensed structured curriculum in-depth discussion of all the topics and my guarantee of your understanding one-on-one -on -one guidance with me and live weekend classes to know more about the training you can whatsapp us on this given number in this problem we will be taking array 1 array 2 and the element frequency map and uh, this is the constructor find some pairs where we are given nums1 and nums2 so i will be assigning both the arrays to array1 and array2 to save it and uh, we will be parsing through each item of the nums2 and i will be updating the element frequency hash map now once this is done then we will be uh, looking at the add api where an index with a given value will be updated in nums2 so as soon as the value has to be updated the previous value if it was let's say 2 to which i want to add 3 then the previous value has to be decremented in frequency from the map and then the updated values frequency has to be increased okay this is how the add will work and uh, in the count again if, if i want to count all the pairs a plus b where it is equals to the target that means the total sum then i will be iterating through the smaller array which is array one and assuming each of them as the element so this element is actually a and I will be finding the total minus element in array B, which can be done by looking at the hash map frequency in the element frequency, right? And continuously adding it to the result counter. And finally, we will return the total number of pairs. So this is the entire code and I hope it is clear. If you still have any doubt, then feel free to comment below and I'll try to help you as soon as possible. See you guys in the next video. Thank you.